Why Fondir Nakhalet? The present area of Eastern Nagaland region under the edges of Eastern Naga People's Organization ENBO was historically and geographically never under any foreign rule before the Indian independence and was an excluded and unadministrated area. The region was unconquered and unoccupied even during the British rule. <laughs> Whereas Naga Hills, which is inhabited by other advanced tribes in the southwestern part of Nagaland, was a district of Assam under the British Raj. Since 1866, while some area was part of the princely state of Manipur until recently, <coughs> it was only in February 1948 the eastern Naga region inhabited by the tribes of Chang, Hom, Sangtam, Konyak, Kemyongan, Yimchungur, and Tikir tribes came into the map of India as a division under the Northeast Foundier Agency known as Twin Sang Foundier Division and kept under the Ministry of External Affairs of Government of India. Today, the Eastern Nagaland area covers the following district Kifri, Longlang, Moon, Twin Sang, Samator, and Noklak, with an area of about 8,154 square kilometer out of the total area of 16,579 square kilometer of the state of Nagaland. <laughs> in 1957, the Twin Sang Fondier Division of Northeast Fondier Agency and the Naga Hills District of Assam were amalgamated into, the, into one administrative until known as Naga Hills Twin Sang area. And during this period, a few schools and primary health centers were built in the eastern Nagaland region, along with a couple of routes, which were mostly kacha routes in nature. <laughs> By Nagaland Statehood Act, number 27 of 4 September 1962, Nagaland as a state under the Union of India was declared on 1st December 1963, and thus the Eastern Nagaland region, Dwin Sang Fondier Division of Nefa and Naga Hills District of Assam amalgamated together to form full fledged state. But Dwin Sang District, which is now known as the Eastern Nagaland region, was awarded a status of Regional Council under Article 371A of Indian Constitution, which keep it under the special special provisions of a period of 10 years from 1963 to 1973, consisting of 35 regional council, council members and the deputy commissioner, the de facto chairman of the council was none other than the deputy commissioner of Twinsang, who was directly under, under the control of Nagaland commissioner and also the chief minister of Nagaland. Under the constitution of India, Article 371A, Clause 2B clearly states that where any money provided by the central government to the Nagaland government as a whole Governor of Nagaland should arrange for an equitable allocation of the money between Twin Sang District, that is Eastern Nagaland region, and the race of the state. However, this has never been, has never happened, implemented since most of our re representatives were innocent and ignorant, and on the other hand, the governor. The governor of Nagaland did not discharge his cons constitutional obligation as an enshrined in the constitution to assist the region in full measure to the base of his ability. Although the eastern Nagaland area had 48% of the total population of the state of Nagaland, only 6 MLAs 
got to represent this region and the Naga Hills area was represented by 40 members in the Nagaland Assembly at the time when Nagaland state was created. So Eastern Nagaland people had voiced their grievance of underrepresentation in the state assembly. Then the assembly seat was increased to 12 MLS for Duinsang district in 1968 and on completing the 10 years of special provision barrot, the eastern Nagaland region was allocated only 20 seats whereas this area should have at least 40 assembly seats thereby depriving the eastern Nagaland people to this state and underrepresented in the Nagaland State Assembly. The people of Eastern Nagaland region have, have felt deeply about this stepmotherly treatment which is still continued by the present state government. As the Eastern Nagaland region is situated in an extremely strategic location, this should, this should have been a good enough reason for speedy all-round development. However, it had it be it's been 59 years and yet to take the nipple development have has taken place and the eastern Nagaland people feel that the time has finally come for this region to be fully separated and the entire affairs of the administration should be handled exclusively by local people who are now ready and capable to manage their own affairs. The promise to the people of Eastern Nagaland by the race of Nagaland for a better life now and even brighter future is at the grassroots of stark poverty, deeper hardship, hopelessness and despair for the upcoming young generation. However, much longer would the Eastern Nagaland people have to bear the burden of the entire ever-increasing state debt burden and resource deficit in the backdoor backdrop of the generous and increasing central funding released to the state along with multiple allegation now in the public domain. Of rampant corruption cases and gross instant of misgovernance. As per the statistic for employment of Eastern Nagaland people stand at 18 percent, including married, well, the race of Nagaland has 82 percent in the state, even after implementation of reservation policy. The village council in the entire eastern Nagaland region undertook to minutely collect all the persons employed under Nagaland government service which are recorded, checked, verified and certified by the respective council and the entire statistic were presented to officials of Home Minister Government of India. Analysis of comparative development disparities of Eastern Nagaland, vice versa, the race of the districts and downs. Major development sectors in race of the Nagas and in Eastern Nagas. Uh, directed office, railway station, airport, authority, airport authorities, science center. NDBC, School of Engineering and Technology, Sard NU Branch, ICAR, State Cricket Stadium, Stadium, National Institute of Technology, New Railway Station, New Airport, Foreland, New Medical College, Science College, IG Stadium, NU Branch, NILIT, NIE, LID. Mendel Institute of Nagaland, TV Station, Music Tax Force, Nagaland University, Veterinary College, Ayurvedic College, Sainik School, Nagaland Paper and Pulp Mill, Agriculture Research Center, 
Central Institute of Horticulture, National Institute of Technology, Nagaland Honeybee Mission, Nagaland Bio, Bio Research Mission, Tafma Mithon Research Center, School of Management Studies. Among all these development, major development sector, only one only one of the institute is in Eastern Nagaland, that is New Medical College in Mon District. The rest of the major development sector are enjoyed and is function and it only function in western part or the rest of the Nagas, leaving behind all leaving behind the eastern Naka regions. The beautiful part of this is that the Eastern Naga Nagaland region has been left out of the first four national five-year plan program, which take up several key infrastructure development projects in India. In India, dating back to 1951, it was only towards the end of the fifth-year plan. Fifth five year plan that the Eastern Nagaland area got a chance to take part in national development program to move ahead with time where good road connectivity is of paramount importance. However, till that there is not a single route in the Eastern Nagaland area which can be called an all weather route. The strategy is owing to poverty and unemployed problem. Huge number of youths from the eastern Nagaland region are migrate, migrating to development develop towns like Koima, Timapur and Mokokchung, which are the advanced area of the Nagaland state. This youth leave their home to earn a mere two square meals or simply to receive primary education and in return work work as a domestic help domestic helper today around 15000 to 20000 young people are compelled to leave their homes for better opportunity and often these young stars fall prey to human rights violation like child labor physical and sexual abuse etc enbo delegation on the Entrustment of every village council in the eastern Nagaland region to press the demand for a full fledged frontier Nagaland state. Submitted a memorandum to the Prime Minister of India for demand of frontier Nagaland state by the ENB on, on 25th November 2010 at New Delhi to fulfill the desire and aspiration of eastern Nagaland people with a separate. State Assembly, a capital, direct funding for the development of the Eastern Naka land region from the central government, a separate high court, a separate governor, since well, doing some area which is now referred as a Eastern Naka land region needed special protection to preserve and respect the religious or social practice of the Nakas. The customary law and procedure, administration of civil and criminal justice involving decision, decision according to the Nagaland customary law, ownership and transfer of land and its resource, resources, which was considered very important by the government of India, particularly for this backward eastern Nagaland region, and so the Parliament of India has agreed to provide this special provision in the constitution of india because the people living in twin sang frontier division or district now known as eastern nagaland has very rich custom and traditional which have been practiced since time immemorial and during the british british rule in india the tribes Konyak, Pom, Sangdam, Chang, Yim Chunga, Tikir, and Kem Yongan were excluded and unadministrated. Owing to the backwardness and seriousness of the situation prevalent in the Eastern Nagaland region, the Nagaland State Legislative Assembly had sermon for a 
tapped on the demand for a separate state for Eastern Nagaland area on 16th and 19th March 2012. At the end of the session, the House resolved and passed a resolution for the creation of four autonomous district councils. However, the resolution of the Nagaland Legislative Assembly was outrightly rejected by the ENBO. In return, the Eastern Nagaland people who or in return the Eastern Nagaland people would handle the development and security of the region locally, which has not been seriously addressed from Koima till then. People of, of this border area would be brought to the mainstream of the Indian nation. All, the, all those personnel who have joined various group and faction would be asked to join and take up a new life to move forward and be part of development of this region of India. The entire eastern Nagaland region is very rich in natural resources and three international trade centers are located in the region which would be a trade and commerce launching pad to the Asian countries. Besides, eastern Nagaland region is very rich in art and culture with a huge talent in Hindi works and this part of the country could create a hub for building an economic powerhouse of the northeast of India. In order to protect them from the exploitation from outsiders, a law was brought about and it was known as the Bengal Eastern Recollection Act of 1873, which prevented outsiders from entering this region without valid documents or inner line permit. During the debate, during the debate in the Parliament House, the then Prime Minister of the India made a categorical statement for giving a protection to Twin Sang people, that is Eastern Nagaland people. At the intro introduction of the 13th Amendment Bill and State Nagaland Bill in 1962, which was adopted and enacted under Article 371A of the Constitution of India to specially safeguard the backward tribes from exploitation. Therefore, this Act of Parliament is in immutable and it must be extended in the Eastern Nagaland. In the service of Eastern Naga and Eastern Naga People's Organization. Thank you.